All right, today's the day. Today we review social, cognitive, and neurological factors in learning as we wrap up Unit 3 of AP Psychology. That's right, this is the last video of Unit 3. Well, not exactly the last video of the unit. We still have the Unit 3 summary video, which covers every single concept in Unit 3 all in one video. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We need to review 3.9 first. So to start, let's review the social learning theory, which suggests that people can learn new behaviors and information by watching and observing others, instead of having to do the actions themselves. This idea emphasizes the role of observational learning, which is when individuals watch the actions of others to see the outcomes of those actions. With social learning, individuals observe other individuals' actions and observe the consequences that happen from those actions. For instance, you might watch your sibling get praised for getting an A in a class or washing the dishes, which would lead you to the belief that if you do those actions, you will get praise as well. Generally with social learning, once an individual has observed a behavior, the individual will often copy or imitate the behavior they witness. Now this happens more frequently if the individual who is observing identifies with the model. The model is the person that the individual is watching. It also happens more frequently if the individual respects and looks up to the model. For example, this is why kids who idolize particular athletes often try to dress like them or imitate their behavior. Another aspect of social learning is vicarious conditioning, which can happen through reinforcement or punishment. Vicarious reinforcement occurs when an individual sees a model receive a reward, which ends up motivating the individual observing to try the same behavior since the individual will expect the same reward. For instance, if your teacher gave everyone extra credit in your class who subscribed to the Mr. Sin channel, you would be more likely then to subscribe expecting extra credit. On the other hand, vicarious punishment occurs when a model gets punished, resulting in the person observing to avoid performing the action that the model was doing. For example, if your friend is texting in class and the teacher calls them out and then forces them to read their text out loud in front of the entire class, resulting in you thinking twice before texting in class. This type of learning not only can help individuals learn new skills, but it can also help an individual better understand how to handle different social situations that they are not familiar with. For example, do you remember the first time you went to a school dance? Ah, the wonderful, awkward moment when you walk in and you have no idea what to do. So you just kind of stand on the side, awkwardly standing there, staring at everyone else. Eventually you watch how other people are dancing and slowly, everybody but slowly, you start to dance and enjoy yourself. Now we can see that social learning impacts not only an individual's behaviors, but their mental processes as well. For instance, oftentimes when we watch someone else perform a task, it can boost our own self-efficacy, since through observing, we gain confidence in our own ability. Social learning also shapes our beliefs and attitudes as well we often will internalize the different reactions that people give to particular situations. For instance, if all your friends constantly hate on a particular show or a type of music, you're more likely to adopt a similar attitude. All right, so that was some social factors in learning, but what about the cognitive and neurological factors? Remember, when talking about cognitive factors, we are looking at different mental processes. These are things like understanding and remembering, all of which influence how we as individuals learn and retain new information. Cognitive theories focus on learning that can happen without reinforcement or observation, with the two main ways that you want to be familiar with being insight learning and latent learning. Insight learning occurs when there is a sudden solution or realization that pops into an individual's mind. This type of learning happens when an individual mentally works through a problem, oftentimes in a non-linear way, resulting in a sudden flash of insight. Think of it as a light bulb moment, a situation situation in which all of a sudden everything suddenly clicks and you realize exactly what to do without having to go through trial and error processing. For example, let's say that an individual is trying to solve a riddle and they've been struggling with this riddle for a while, when all of a sudden, out of seemingly nowhere, the answer pops into their head. This is insight learning, since the aha moment suddenly appears without gradual steps or direct reinforcement. Now I also mentioned latent learning, and this is when an individual learns new information or a skill but does not realize it until the time they need it. Later, when the individual does need the new information or that skill, they'll all of a sudden realize that they learned it. Again, there is no reinforcement or punishment here. The 
individual is just not aware that learning took place. For example, let's say that you take the bus to school every single day. And while on the bus, you look out the window and kind of zone out. But one day you miss the bus and you need to walk home. At first you panic because you're not sure how to get home. But as you start to walk, you start to remember the different streets and landmarks. And all of a sudden you realize that you know the way home. Even though you never intentionally learned the route, you were still able to learn it. Now this brings us to our next concept that you want to be familiar with when it comes to latent learning, and that is cognitive maps. These are a mental picture of an environment. Cognitive maps are often created without an individual being directly aware of it. So latent learning shows us that learning can occur without reinforcement and may only become visible once there's a reason to apply the new knowledge or skill. Now, neurologically, we can also see a couple of factors impact learning as well. For instance, the brain's ability to change and reorganize itself by forming new neural connections, which is known as neuroplasticity, which allows an individual to learn as they practice and review information or skills. But at the same time, we can see that skills and information that are not practiced and not used as often start to become harder to remember. This often occurs due to synaptic changes, such as long-term potentiation, which remember is when two neurons fire together frequently, resulting in the connection between them to actually become stronger, which makes it easier for them to communicate. However, if certain connections are not used often, the connections between those neurons can become weakened. This process is known as long-term depression. Both of these changes allow the brain to remain flexible and focus on storing information that is relevant to the individual. Lastly, I want to quickly highlight just a couple of different brain structures that do impact learning. The first one is the hippocampus, which remember is critical for forming new memories. But also remember, the memories are not stored there. Then there's the amygdala, which deals with learning when there is an emotional component involved, such as being afraid of a stimuli or getting excited for a reward. And lastly, the prefrontal cortex is involved with planning, decision making, and complex reasoning, which helps an individual problem solve. Now, if you still feel like you need more help with any of these concepts, make sure to head on over to my ultimate review packet and check out the practice quizzes that I made on these topics. And speaking of the ultimate review packet, you will also want to check out the unit three summary video that is only found in the packet. You can find it on the top of unit three. The video goes over all of the information in unit three in one video. It also comes with a study guide to help you take notes on the video and an answer key so you can check your work. This way you can make sure that you crush your unit three test or that AP exam. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I will see you in our next video for our unit three review. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.